live from Richard's apartment. Uh, I have for you guys, it's Atlas by the way, a, uh, a Luar deck profile. So, um, I was really interested in uh, Luard because he looks awesome. He's like a wizard with a hand that looks like he's been fapping too much or something, turns into a lizard thing. But um, seeing how expensive Morfessa and Drag Driver Luard were made me go, well, that sucks. I'm going to try and make it as ghetto as possible. So, in the deck, you will find there is an extreme lack of Morfessas and Drag Drivers. But also, I have made an effort to common out the deck in every way possible. So, let's get started. For my starter, we have Promising Knight David. So he is a GB1. Uh, when you use him for the cost or effects of Retire uh, for your own rearguards, he can count as two. So uh, with their Aura Geyser turn, it turns uh, it turns Aura Geyser into a plus, among other things. So he's nice. Good starter. Um, grade threes, we have four copies of Dragheart Luard. So uh, his skill is uh, Ritual 3. At the start of your ride phase, you can put two normal units to the bottom of the deck, and then you can stride for free that turn. And then his other skill is when you stride on top of him, you counterblast one, retire a rear guard, and then call two grade one or less rear guards. So he's like, instead of GB2, you can uh, you can stride for free pretty much all game once you get to ritual. And then once that happens, you can like your grade threes become useless <laughs> unless you're playing Magic Colony or something. Another thing you can do is the way it works is because it's start of ride phase. It's a condition of the game, so you can go, all right, Luard, free stride, re-ride, and then just stride for free anyway. But do note that you can't do the ritual still the turn you uh, during the turn you ride him, because when you ride, your ride phase is over. So the other grade three is three copies of Blaster Dark Diablo, and that's why I mentioned the re-ride stride thing. Is so, so you can go free ride, ride Blaster Dark Diablo, stride into PBD, and kill something. So it's a pretty good uh, backup. Um, this thing is also just a all-around solid grade three, so still worth running. Um, for grade twos, we have four copies of Knight of Bron Grozny. Yeah, who runs this? I do. So his skill is a GB1. When you call something that is a grade that is less than him, he gets plus 3k. So if you have him on the field, uh, when you do Lord Stride skill, he's 15k. Which means if you if you call a six K behind him like Swordbreaker, that's a twenty one column, and if you have uh, the Night Sky Eagle, which is when called it gets plus four K, so it's eleven. That's a twenty six column. So having this on the field and then constantly calling stuff with Lured Stride still, he's like just a giant column on the side. Um, and then also it's the the deck is suited toward early rush, so calling this from your hand early is not a big deal. So he's like the star of the Grade Two lineup. Um, two copies of Cursed Lancer. Told you it was ghetto. On hit, unflip. Uh, this is mainly to go with two copies of Skull Witch Nemen. So she's on call, counter blast, drop draw two, so it helps you set up ritual. Um, so a fun turn is to ride him, call her, drop draw two, on hit, unflip. Um, there is a bit of a counter blast problem with this deck if you start to run out of Abyssal Owls and stuff like that, so having your unflips where you can get them is good. Uh, like, the deck is so janky that you, if you have more fesses, good on you. Take these out, put them in, take out a Nemen, there you go. So, you know, it's janky, but it's it's good. So, uh, next up, two copies of Fierce Bow, that promo you got from BWC 2015 and never used. Um, he's GB1. If you have one or less card in back row, he gets plus 2k and then on hit soul charge counter charge. Um, so typically what you want to do is uh, you, you typically do your sacking of uh, rear guards during battle phase anyway. So you want you usually leave his attack for last. So you go like column, vanguard, sack three or sack two, and then now he's at 11k. And you can stack your triggers on that and then hit soul charge, counter charge. So like there's multiple avenues to unflip your damage and get soul for, uh, you know, if you want to keep recycling sword breaker and things like that. Um, one copy of Drag Wizard Morfessa. Why am I running it? Because I pulled it. If I didn't pull it, I wouldn't be running it. So her skill is uh, Ritual 3, GB1. Uh, if, you're ri if you're in Ritual, when she attacks, she gets plus 5k, and then red text um, uh, on hit, counter blast, and call it grade 1 from deck. And then the other skill is in drop zone, she gets grade, grade minus 1. So this counts toward Ritual. Um, everyone is losing their shit over, like, oh, I gotta run four more Fessa, because I can get Ritual early. I'm like, look, you you physically can't discard that many cards unless you're overguarding to get ritual on like Luard's first stride and if you're striding second or striding first 
then you can't really use Ritual because you have to ride Luard and then you have to discard for Stride anyway. So this thing is totally overblown. And like the, the on hit still and the plus 5k still is pretty good. And I, I just found the like, oh, he's treated as grade one and drop. It, it hasn't really helped me that much. So throw, throw off the shackles of monetary oppression. Don't get more Fessa or something. I don't know. Uh, grade ones, we have three copies of Night Sky Eagle. So his still is uh, when he's placed on rearguard, he gets plus 4k, so he's an 11k. So uh, this thing works really well with uh, Luard Stride still in that because he can only call grade ones, sometimes you gotta, you know, you gotta attack with stuff. So you can call him in the front and he's an 11k by himself. And then, like, the thing I mentioned before with Grizzly, if Grizzly's around, you put one behind Grizzly and then, you know, you maybe call a different one over here. So you have, like, a 26 and then an 11k attacker. So I really like this card. Um, it 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 go it competes with for four versus three with Abyssal Isle, but right now I have it at three. Um, this is from GBT03, by the way, if you're looking for it. It's a common. Go find it. Uh, four copies of Abyssal Isle. Um, on call, check top seven for Luard, and then you discard grades equaling three. So um, this lets you find Luard. That's nice. And then Ritual 3, when he's killed if you uh, by a... By the cost or effect of a Luard Vanguard, you, uh, you counter charge if you're in Ritual. So, this is most of the counter charge engine. You're typically going to put this back with Luard's, uh, you know, free stride thing put on bottom. Call it back out. Um, it, it's just, it, it's it's a good card. Like, probably one of the best cards in the set of GBT09. I know that's weird. Um, so, yeah. Two copies of uh, Pitch Black Sage Charon. So, this guy is your Blaster Dark Diablo searcher. Um, this means that with him, and then also if you're sacking for a Blaster Vanguard, he counts as two, so for PBD and uh, Spectral turns mostly. But the important thing is that uh, this allows you to go, okay, I have a Luard in my hand, and I'm not going to be able to do the Ritual Stride still, so call Charon, search Blaster Dark Diablo, dump a one. You help your Ritual count. And then on top of that, you can, like, sack this off for the Luard Stride still, that's two. Like, it, it, it just helps toward the Ritual account, and it can be good on those turns where you get to sack two or three things. Um, it's ride consistency, and I like it. Uh, two copies of Blackwing Swordbreaker. Uh, it's the reprint. Um, when called from deck, Soul Blast draw. So really good with, uh, with Luard Stride still. Uh, most of the soul in the deck goes to toward this or, you know, the one order guys return. Um, I actually did something crazy. I was playing against Mega Colony a couple days ago in Locals. And with Luard Stride still, I, uh, I, he stunned my Vanguard and I couldn't rewrite because I didn't have any threes. So I used Luard Stride still to call two of these out, Soul Blast two, draw two. And then I strode into Carnivore, which couldn't attack, but I could still Carnivore kill two things, which is, you know, hurtful to Mega Colony. So, um,. This thing allows you to get an early game advantage, and, or early to mid-game advantage, helps you blow up. Um, if you draw into it, just guard it or plunk it down and hope they kill it or kill it off with their own thing. It's it's a very flexible card. Um, and then PGs are four copies of Drag Saber Ezras. So I had... I managed to get these for like eight, and now they're 20. I'm sorry. Um, so her skill is, uh, you know, usual PG stuff, and then if she's in drop zone, if you're at Ritual and GB1, you can put another copy of her bottom of deck sack a unit and return her to your hand so you just you can get your pg back anytime and on top of that it can prevent you from decking out which is a problem sometimes not decking out but like you get close to it um so she's pretty important and especially if you're running the counter charge engine i do you don't really need the unflip pgs so i like her grade ones we have or no that was grade ones grade zeros uh my triggers are uh Two copies of Mage of the Road Eye, so his skill is uh, when you you, you can count as two for a sacrifice, so that's good. And then when he's killed for a cost or an effect, you shuffle him back in. So it's mostly just so you can go, all right, Luard Stride still, call this out. Sack it off with Diablo. There you go. Um, sometimes the stand trigger goes off as a stand trigger, because usually you go, you know, attack with a side, then Vander, then something else. But... Uh, I wouldn't really worry about, like, oh, I'm going to check a stand trigger and not have anything to stand. That's not what you're using him for. You're using him for the, you know, treat as two. So, I like him. Uh, let's see. For Halal, um, there is a bit of a soul problem. He's a Mardal clone. There is a bit of a soul problem, and, you know, having draw triggers is always good. Um, 
the whole 12 crit thing isn't really needed because your vanguard is, you know, gigantic anyway, so. Halal, OP, and common. And then 6 crit, which are 3 Grim Reaper and 3 Death Feather Eagle. Um, you'll notice I went out of my way to get the old timey crit triggers, so that's fun. Uh, when we get that new Bilal Owl in GBT-10, it's, it's gonna drop, it's gonna be like 4 owls and then 1 and 1 for uh, crits, but good stuff. And then 4 heals, which again, old timey heals. Um, for the G deck, we have 3 copies of Orgeyser Dragon. Thank you, reprint set. So, on tack, you can counterblast, soul blast, sack two rear guards, flip up a copy, then you look at top two cards of your deck, and then for every grid one or less thing in there, he gets plus 5k. So, this is mostly just to guard, uh, get advantage for yourself. Um, it's a really good first stride. Uh, some, you won't do it all the time, but it's still good to have. And then also, a, uh, the Aura Geyser Doomed, which is uh, counterblast one, flip up an Aura Geyser, sack three. Check top two. For every grade one or less, you retire something. Then if you have three aura geyser after doing that, it gets a crit. So, um, sometimes if you have something really important you get a kill, you go into doomed first. And because David counts as two, it's not really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a wash. Um, at least with doomed. But sometimes you can, like, you usually do this as your first try, and then you do this later for a crit, for crit pressure. It's good stuff. Um, this is a lot cheaper than it used to be. What, what did uh, Aura Geyser used to be years ago, or when it first came out? Like $20, $25? 25 Yeah. Now it's like 10 at most. <laughs> and Aura Geyser Doom is like 5 so it's not not hard to do anymore, thank God. Um, then we have one copy of Carnivore Dragon, again, common doubt because this is Ghetto Lured. So his skill is you can sack off a unit, and then your opponent chooses two units, and they have to kill them. And uh, if they can't kill two, your front row gets plus 4k. Um, just a side note, people, if they have one unit, or one rear guard, and you kill your one, they still have to kill that rear guard, and you also get the plus four. So all you people arguing out there, just keep that in mind. Um, also, the, the good thing about this is, like, if they have a semi-empty field, it's good. It's a really good first stride, because, you know, I got nothing better to do. Um, and then... The, the problem is that your opponent chooses, so if they have something important you're gonna kill, that's what Doomed is for. So, I really like him. Carnivore, good middle of the road stride. Four copy of Phantom Blaster Diablo. I really shouldn't have to explain what this does, um, but it's still your finisher stride like nine out of ten times, and it's really, really good. Um, yeah. Two copies of Spectral Blaster Diablo. Um, so his skill is you uh, Soul Blast and Retire a unit, and then he gets Red Text, uh, GB3. Counter Blast 2, at the end of the battle that he attacked, you sack off two units, and then he restands and gets Drive minus two. And then if you have a Diablo Heart, you can call a Grid 1 from deck after doing that. So, um, typically this is what, like, when you're playing against a deck that has, like, a really full field and not a lot of cards in hand, so, Di uh, so you know, Diablo wouldn't really help that much. Or, you know, Phantom Blaster Diablo. So, a restander is pretty good. I think it's the worst restander in the game. I'm sorry. Uh, when we get Ogma, I You're think. You're gonna get a lot of hate for that one. I know I am. I know I am, and I'm sorry. Wait, I'm not sorry. Fuck you. This thing is a terrible restander, but I'm running it anyway because it's like it's still a it's still a decent option. The the worst restander in the game is still a restander. Okay. That's not to say like you know. Um, I think when we get all the new ritual stuff in GBT10, this will obviously get an update. Um, I think there, the, the fight you guys are going to see is the, or the the fight you guys probably saw or will see between me and Chris. I lose because I saw six of my seven grade threes, but still, uh, good stride. Let's see. I think I would um, argue that Extreme Valor Buster was probably the worst or, restate. Well, no, because you don't have to lose resources for Buster. You just attack them. You need five rear guards. Yeah. But, I mean, like, you kind of commit with Nova Grappler anyway. Uh, one copy of Seabreeze, because this is a stride deck. Um, I was playing against Chaos a couple days ago, and I ended up going into this with Luard's Ritual Stride still. I'm not even kidding. So, you know. Uh, you know, it's, st it's still a stride deck, so you want to run this. Um, and then G-Guards are two copies of Plotmaker. So when you guard, if he's in Ritual, he gets plus 10k shield. This thing's amazing and really easy to do, which is why it's like $20 now. Jesus. Um, 
one copy of Ludwig because uh, I didn't want to get a third one. And also, sometimes you want to set up ritual where you get guard and then you can move a grade one or less to guard circle. So, if you ended up having to call like a trigger or something, you can make it a 36k by himself. Usually, though, you're like, I'm going to take that sword breaker, move it over here. 31. Helps set up ritual. And then also one dismal because uh, protects your rear guards and then also Grozny is super important. So that was Ghetto Lord. Um, if you have any complaints or grievances, shout them below in the comments and I'll be sure to make fun of you. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.